Governor Hobbs removed every single member of the Arizona-Mexico Commission, all 31 people. Just one of the headlines we'll talk about with today's panel, Daniel Scarpinato, the former chief of staff for Governor Doug Ducey and Democratic consultant Don Penage Thacker. Thanks for being here, both of us. I want to start with you, Me Arizona-Mexico Commission, governor's clean cleaning house over there. Um, is this a smart move? That's a lot of institutional knowledge. Some of these people have been on this, this commission for years. The, the commission builds relationships between Arizona and Mexico, the state's largest trading partner. Smart move or not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what you just said is exactly the point. Some of these people have been on this commission not just for years, but for decades. In what other industry does new management come in and you just get to stay there without reasserting your qualifications and suitability and alignment with the vision and objectives of that new management? And so Katie Hobbs has that power because the people of Arizona gave her that power. To think that 31 people are the only people in Arizona who have strong ties and institutional knowledge about these binational issues is, I mean, really silly. All of those people have been invited to reapply, mm -hmm. and those who make their case, I'm sure, will get welcomed back. I'm predicting Daniel has a different <laughs> point of view on this. I mean, some of those people are holdovers, obviously, from uh, your former boss's mm -hmm. administration. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, look, the new governor has the prerogative to make changes. Um, I think this was a boneheaded decision and a great way for her to make enemies. I mean, to wipe everyone out, and I think this is just another example of, for the governor and her team, it's all politics all the time. One of the members, David Adami, endorsed her opponent in the primary. I think a lot of this was just kind of political retribution. These are folks she should be making friends with and reaching out to in the business community rather than just trying to make enemies. Yeah, boneheaded decision. I mean, how does this affect Arizonans, though, everyday Arizonans? Oh, well, I think the relationship <laughs> with Mexico is very important. Yeah. And, and to have almost 300 years of combined wisdom, I disagree with Don. I think we do want people who have three decades experience who are not political and understand the, the international relationship with Mexico. I'll be curious who she does appoint. And if I were advising any of the folks that were removed on a Friday afternoon with no notice after years of public service, I would say do not apply, do not reapply. Um, let her go find new people. Care to I respond to that? I think that a lot of those folks are very much so reapplying. I they think that those conversations. It's embarrassing. I think those conversations have already been happening about letting people know that they are welcome to reapply, what her vision is for this. And, um, you know, the, to, to say that these are not political, nothing could be further from the truth. These no. are political <laughs> appointees. Oh, I'm saying they, it is political. I think she removed but, some people because she didn't like who they endorsed in the Democratic. She, well, she primary. removed everyone, friends, foes. Everyone is going to be welcome to a phone call. It should, it should, it should, phone it should call be pointed to say out. Thank you for your service. It, it, Again, what a great way to yeah. make enemies. Well, it should be pointed out that Democrats and Republicans on that, and that were part of that 31, those 31 members yes. that were removed. So, bipartisan yeah. removal, I suppose. Sure, but Dennis, and this may get into some of our other topics. You can't govern without talking to people. And that seems to be their M.O. right now. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about the other big headline coming out of the governor's uh, office. She lost another nominee mm -hmm. to lead the Department of Child Safety this week. You were on Twitter. You were criticizing the governor over this. Why is she at fault for this? I mean, she is dealing with, uh, you know, a Republican legislature that is bound to stop her agenda. Well, that They've said that. Well, that's not what that. she said in her statement. Yeah. She said that there were issues of why she removed him. The real issue here is that they're not vetting these nominees. So thank goodness the Senate is doing what they're doing because somebody needs to vet these folks. She made the decision, Dennis, to remove this individual, mm -hmm. not the Senate. So I think this is on her and just an example of them not being ready for prime time with some of these picks. And, and they fired everybody. Everybody's gone from DCS. This actually does impact kids and people in Arizona. And now we have a bunch of agencies in the state with no leadership. Yeah, well, uh, well let's talk a little bit about that because Jake Hoffman, who is the head of the nominations committee, just kind of taking credit for this. He was the one who's also criticizing Hobbs for not vetting this. I mean, what kind of culpability does, does Hobbs have in this and not vetting these candidates more properly? I Hoffman taking credit is exactly what he's doing here. The Hobbs administration are the ones who said, look, we thought this person would be suitable for the job. 
he tried it out for a bit. Turns out he was right. I am grateful, and I think that we should all be grateful that we have a governor's office who is able to be agile, see when they have made what turns out to not be a wise appointment, get that person out of the office, and they are already at work finding someone more suitable to that position. It, I am grateful to have someone who's able to say, hey, you know what? We made a mistake. We had a short timeline. Now we're going to do better. And let's, let's talk real quick mm -hmm. here. The commission, the nominations committee, again, is headed by someone, Senator Jay Kaufman, very loud critic of, of the governor, has said uh, that he wants to stop her agenda. What makes, shouldn't that disqualify him from hitting this committee? No, I mean, I think he's done a phenomenal job with mm -hmm. this. The questions have been fair. The process has been fair. Some of the nominees have crumbled because they can't answer basic questions. To me, the most startling thing was after kind of all the virtue signaling and, and higher than thou talk during COVID that the health person wouldn't even defend some of the decisions she made. So I think that they've approved some folks that have been decent and they've not approved some folks that have okay. been really bad for the state and haven't been I, able to answer questions. I'll give you a chance for a short response and then we'll have to wrap it up. I will agree on one thing that Hoffman is phenomenal at, which is creating scandal and getting a spotlight on himself. Hoffman cares about attention for Hoffman. He does not care about allowing the work of government and doing work for the people of Arizona to move forward. Disagree, That's I think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to end it right there. That is all the time we have. Be sure to join us next week for more Politics Unplugged.